Well, that is certainly radioactive. <laughs> you know what that means. Time to break out the alcohol. No, really. Now entering the facility. Cars, walls, jelly donuts, roads, Kevin, crippling social anxiety. Many things that you interact with on a daily basis are thankfully made up of stable atoms. Most items you interact with, in fact, and that is to say over time, the relative positions of the particles, the protons and the neutrons inside the nuclei of these atoms doesn't change over time. But like posts on 4chan, many of the elements that make up matter are unstable. Over time, the nuclei of these typically larger atoms emits particles of itself and radiation outwards in random directions on a pathway towards greater stability. This is what radioactivity is, and it's the process at work whenever you hear about the decomposition of radon or plutonium and the like. And I think the human fascination with radiation and radioactivity comes down to two things. One, it's very dangerous, and two, it's very invisible. Well, it's invisible unless you're very clever, like Nobel Prize winning clever, which we will be getting today. But first, I guess I need something decently radioactive. One sec. Why Kyle is on a watch list in three, two, one. This is a hunk of uranium ore. I got it from Don't Worry About It, and it undergoes around 10,000 nuclear decay events every second, which is on the low end. If you can believe it, don't worry. It's fine that I'm holding it like this, just maybe not so close to my brain. With the proper equipment, you can easily verify its radioactivity, but again, you can't see anything happening, so you're not really appreciating what's going on and not getting why nuclear physics in this regard is so dang cool. So now, we're gonna follow in the footsteps of some brilliant scientists and try to make the invisible visible. At the very end of the 19th century, Scottish physicist Charles Wilson was working on a tabletop device that could form clouds and then study their optical properties. In his little chamber by 1911, he had perfected a way to create little clouds of water vapor, and he discovered that ions, or charged particles, were great as sources for accumulating this water vapor and therefore clouds, and that these ions could be created in turn by of course, ionizing radiation, but the very same radiation that comes out of radioactive material. And so in practice, a Wilson cloud chamber could visualize for anyone who wanted to see the actual paths taken by radiation from radioactive materials in the form of cloud formation. In 1927, both he and Arthur Compton, another physicist, won a Nobel Prize for this work. And guess what? Today, we are gonna build one of these from scratch. We're gonna build a cloud chamber with household materials or materials you can get on the very cheap. We're gonna put some uranium in it, and then we're gonna hope for the best, because if we do it right, it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous. But cut me some slack. I've never done this before, but I am a physics boy. And of course, as we always do on this show, we have a list of materials if you wanna follow along with us, including some dry ice, some isopropyl alcohol, of course, some black gesso, some Indian yellow, and just a little bit of liquid white, which I've primed the canvas with. Today we'll be making some happy little clouds. Slightly radioactive, but very happy. Everybody needs a friend. Unless you want to beat the devil out of them. Thankfully, this instance of Nobel Prize winning physics is relatively simple to do and at home with materials you can either find at home or you can buy relatively cheaply. What we're gonna be doing, more or less, is creating a sealed chamber of super saturated alcohol vapor to make clouds when radiation rampages through it. To do that, we're gonna to wanna to get alcohol basically everywhere, like the University of Arizona. So if you wanna follow along with me, here's how we're gonna make this cloud chamber. I have an aquarium, you can buy at any pet store for 20 or 30 bucks. I cut out the top, and at the bottom, I put this gauze. You can also use felt, and this is what I'm going to pour the alcohol on to hold onto it and let the vapor from the alcohol diffuse down towards the coldest part. What's the coldest part, you may ask? Well, just this simple cooking sheet that I painted black with my Vanta Black substitute so we can see the trails very nicely. And to my left, I have the cooling source, which is very, very cold carbon dioxide, or what you humans call dry ice. 
I don't know, to me it just makes me look like a, 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 a discount magician. Finally, I have my isopropyl alcohol. You can find this in the first aid section of uh, many stores. They're kind of sold out right now because, you know, the plague. But you want the highest percentage that you can get. I have 91%. And I have powerful LEDs that will help illuminate the source once we see it. And of course, I have my source of uranium over there. So there's nothing left to do but to set it all up and see what we get. Okay, now the moment of truth. We have to wait about five to 10 minutes for the alcohol vapor to make its way down towards the chilled plate and then become super saturated so we can actually see the trails. And that's gonna take a little while. I'm also gonna put a large weight on the top of this because you may find that when you differentially heat a metal plate, it starts to seriously warp. So I'm gonna put a big sandbag on top of this and we're going to wait five to 10 minutes and then we'll see what we get. Ho oh, ho, I'm excited. Not irradiated, yet. So I've turned out the lights, I've hit the uranium with some powerful LEDs, and as you can see, the vapor, wow, see that trail? That was literally high energy radiation smashing into the alcohol vapor, creating an ionized trail of alcohol. Again, much like the University of Arizona. But what are we actually seeing here? Well, 10,000 times every second, we're not seeing all of the pathways here. Alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays are shooting out in random directions from the uranium ore at random times. And they ionize atoms and molecules in their way as they do so. Now, these charged particles with a net charge then act to attract other atoms and molecules in this alcoholic mist with partial charges, and then condensation happens to form these radiation trails. This is probably the closest you will ever come to seeing radiation with your very own eyes. So, ooh, take it in. Not the, not the radiation dose, the visuals. You know what I mean. Now I know not everyone has access to uranium, but the cool thing about a cloud chamber is that even without a source of radiation inside, nature provides. Admin. What? Oh, don't show her. The military is on the phone. It's about the electric barrier episode. Like, it's not about the uranium that I have right here? Oh, okay, sorry, just one sec. <laughs> oh, DOD, what up? It's Hill Doggo. No, I, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't like it either. Not all radiation revealing vapor trails look the same. Different particle sizes, different particle energies, different interactions, they all make for different looking pathways through the vape. <laughs> While our chunk of uranium, don't worry where I got it, emits mostly alpha and beta radiation for those chunky and thin trails respectively, electrons alone can produce some curving tracks, while transformations of muons can produce trails at nearly right angles. And who knows what the heck photoelectrons are doing? They're all over the place. Of course, I'm not recommending that you hoard a bunch of different radioactive sources in your home and use them to see all the possible beautiful permutations of vapor trails through alcohol in a cloud chamber. I'm just saying there's a lot more physics than we're even getting into in this program. And I definitely cannot help you get uranium, so do not ask me that. <laughs> oh, what's that? How much additional military spending in the budget do you need? <laughs> sure, why not? It's America, isn't it? <laughs> oh, hello. Sorry, I was just talking to my... Like I said, even if you don't have uranium and you want to build your own cloud chamber, don't worry. The universe provides. I've kept everything the same here, except I've removed the uranium ore. Doesn't look like much, but let's look a little closelier. All right, did you see that? That little event happening every few seconds or so, depending on the energy, came from outer space. You just saw cosmic radiation. 
High energy protons and atomic nuclei are zipping all around the universe at all times at nearly the speed of light. They are generated inside of stars, by events outside of our own solar system, etc. What's important here is that some tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of them careen towards Earth smack into our atmosphere and then produce air showers of secondary particles, as you see here, that would be produced in something like a particle accelerator. And it's these secondary particles that every so often make it all the way down to us and our very own cloud chamber. The Cloud Chamber is a fantastic science demo, and if you want to try your own hand at it, I have pinned to this video some PDFs that you can use to do it yourself. And if you found the footage of the uranium going off as enchanting as I did, I have now uploaded an additional 4K long video of just this happening. If you want to, I don't know, get, you know, have beats to get irradiated to. The Cloud Chamber is a great example of what science does best. Make the universe as it really is, easier to see. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this video. Today especially, I want to recognize research assistant Heather Crane and visiting scholar Chris Reese. If you want to join the facility, get on the staff and join over 1,200 nerds who every day are chatting with me on our Discord, giving me episode ideas, seeing episodes early, getting private live streams, not like that, showing me photos of their pets. You can go to patreon.com slash kylehill right now and get on the staff today. And if you support the facility just enough, you get your name on ARIA here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds of you, so I have no idea how I'm going to pass the time. Why would I even astronaut eyes? So we were talking about cosmic radiation, and it's even more prevalent in outer space because we don't have the atmosphere uh, of Earth to block all the cosmic radiation. And so it's widely reported by astronauts to see a few times a minute flashes in their eyes, like something was tickling their retina and activating the light sensing bits. And what we think this is, is cosmic radiation flying into the eyeballs of astronauts through spacecraft, through the International Space Station, into the eyeballs and either creating like a Cherenkov radiation situation or directly activating the rods and cones at the back of the eyes. So Cloud Chamber is just like a, a very alcoholic version of an astronaut eyeball is, I guess, what I'm saying. But not as alcoholic as the University of... <laughs> I shouldn't. Okay, one sec. <laughs> Thanks for watching. University of Arizona, give me an honorary degree.